In fact, housekeeping services provided by non-Japanese are already up and running. This is one such firm called Shebu. They employ Filipino maids who have resident permits. On this day, two women originally from the Philippines arrived for training. When you want to say, I know, in a more polite way, say, certainly, or I understand. The company has been actively hiring Filipinos to grow its housekeeping business. This woman from the Philippines began working as a housekeeper two years ago. She heads to the home of a customer in Tokyo. Good morning! This is Judy Goto. Busy with work, she requested services twice a month to reduce the burden of housework. Excuse me, Ms. Judy, is there anything you'd like me to do first? Um, the washing and vacuuming. Right away, she starts doing the washing. She works expertly and quickly. She even notices small details, such as the drain. <laughs> yes! I should clean everything while I'm doing this. Filipinos are actually highly sought after around the world as housekeepers. What's more? Do you know what color is this? Gray. This is blue. Gray. Blue, yes, I want blue. They can also teach children English. Prices start at 10,000 yen per three hours. <laughs> the deregulation is a first attempt. We also plan to become more active in this field. But there are also big challenges. This is the country's biggest housekeeping services provider, Bears. The company employs 4,000 Japanese staff members. But concerned about a potential shortage of workers, managing director Yuki Takahashi decided to actively hire foreigners. So she headed to Manila in the Philippines. She wants to find out about the local situation before hiring workers. This is a school specializing in teaching housekeeping skills. The women here are all future housekeepers. We can't keep up with demand by hiring just Japanese people. It's definitely not too late for Japanese companies to start preparing and working on this. In fact, in the Philippines, housekeepers are required to acquire national certification. The women here learn how to clean and do washing before being dispatched to Europe, the United States, and the Middle East. Ms. Takahashi is thinking of hiring about 500 Filipinos as housekeepers. But... The Japanese government is in the process of imposing new rules on companies wanting to invite foreign workers from abroad. For example, they must pay the cost of language and cultural education for foreign workers. A fixed monthly salary of 200,000 yen must also be provided. Workers are not allowed to do work beyond housekeeping. What's more, the working period is limited to three years. In July, Bears held an emergency meeting which was attended by Ms. Takahashi and other directors. The acceptance period is about to start. First and foremost, we need to decide if our company is actually going to accept foreign workers. So, if the special zone is approved, 
Will that mean service providers will be wholeheartedly encouraged to do this? Ultimately, the burden will be on companies. In the end, it might be an ordinance that causes problems for our customers. With the variety of costs involved, service providers would have no choice but to raise prices. Bears believes the cost for a foreign worker may end up being 20% higher than that for Japanese staff members. It's certainly possible that no companies hire foreign workers. Very possible. Bears isn't alone. In an independent survey, five of seven companies in the industry said they would not hire foreign workers. The biggest reason was cost. The government's response. If there are areas other than housekeeping services for which we should provide assistance, then we need to consider them. But basically, service providers need to shoulder their own costs. Strategic special zones were meant to encourage more women to work outside the home. But as it stands, they may end up as pies in the sky.